another dynamic speaker a journalist and a editor he was with outlook now with economic times as a consultant editor ladies and gentlemen let us all put our hands together welcoming anand mahadevan thank you thank you thank you i tried my best not to repeat what he said because if i repeated it i would forget everything i have to say that's one irish man introducing another irish man i didn't realize that ayers are irish um so this morning i want to share uh, two aspects of my story i want to share about the story of how i discovered jesus and i also want to share the story of how i have been learning to delight in jesus for the past 25 years so delighting uh, discovering jesus and delighting in jesus let me start with the story of my discovery of jesus some of my earliest and most fondest recollections of my uh, childhood were uh, have to do with my grandfather we had a very special relationship he loved me dearly and and i truly deeply loved him back uh, he was a priest in a temple we were born uh, in a brahmin family and uh, so my earliest spiritual experiences uh, were really shaped uh, by the love my grandfather showered upon me as i began to grow uh, my parents in true brahmin tradition we would every year uh, go on a pilgrimage visiting different temples uh, that was part of my spiritual journey and then soon after when i was in my early teens uh, i walked through the sacred thread ceremony uh, so that shaped that was also part shaped me that was also part of my spiritual uh, experience and after I'd become uh, old some grown some more old uh, you know become a little more older i spent a couple of summers with my grandfather uh, in the temple town of sri rangam uh, learning more about the things he believed and um, all of these spiritual experiences were shaping me however sadly in all this i was unable to make a meaningful connection with god in all of this uh, i was unable to have a heart experience of god and so i drifted away and i became an atheist and i completely lost faith uh, in the very existence of god and as i was walking through this spiritual journey i was also walking on a parallel spiritual journey maybe when i was in my first standard or second standard uh, one of my teachers gave me a comic book which told the story of jesus and i remember reading that comic book with, which had the life story of jesus and i remember uh, being my my heart being really captivated by jesus who was so kind and so gentle and who was always helping people but the end of the story really surprised me because at the end of the story they crucify jesus on the cross and that completely beat me now you must remember that at that point in time i was a huge rajinikant fan completely in love with rajinikant now i know in the latest movie rajinikant actually died i don't know what kind of movies they're making these days but but earlier rajinikant never died the heroes never die the heroes always get the better of the bad people and so in my world view heroes don't die and when jesus died on the cross at the end of the story it left me very sad and disappointed a few years later i was still in primary school maybe my third grade fourth grade uh, someone gave me a small bible pocket bible i think you have a bible like that in your in your packs and i read the story of jesus again in that bible and i went through the same experience the experience of being fascinated by this man named jesus Uh, unlike remarkable unlike anything i've ever heard born of a virgin uh, absolutely sinless you know remarkably different and as i was re- as i read and as i was fascinated with jesus again i came to this really sad end but why would they kill such a good man why would they punish such a good man why would they crucify such a good man at that point in time the resurrection of jesus didn't quite register in my heart a few years later i was now in my second year of college um and by this time you know i had i didn't really believe in the existence of god or anything because i couldn't make 
no connection with God. A friend of mine uh, who I used to play cricket with, he invited me home uh, to pray. And I said, sure, and I went, and he and his sister prayed for me. It was a simple prayer, and it was a beautiful prayer. But in the simplicity and in the beauty of that prayer, five-minute prayer, Jesus came home to my heart. And when they finished praying, I knew in my heart, nobody told them, they did not tell me, I knew in my heart that I had to follow this Jesus. 25 years ago, um, and I discovered at that moment that that connection with God, that meaningful connection with God that I'd always been longing for, I experienced it in that moment. What did that look like? What did that feel like? Very simple. It was just that I felt loved and accepted by God in Jesus. That was it. And that was the connection to know that I am loved by God, accepted by Him. That was the connection my soul had been longing for. It's not something that I've understood, uh, I can fully explain, but uh, about 15 years later after that, I wrote a column uh, in a magazine called Outlook, and this, in this column I talked about my experience of becoming a follower of Jesus. And allow me to just read a paragraph uh, for us from what I wrote. It was a faith encounter with Jesus that I shall not even attempt to understand or rationalize or explain. I simply accept it. It is my faith. It is what I choose to believe. That evening, I did not change my religion, for in reality, I had none. Hinduism was my identity, not my religion. It still is. The Christianity that I acquired that evening is not a religion. On the contrary, it is an intensely intimate relationship with Jesus. This is the story of my discovery of Jesus. This was the year 1993. The year 1994, I began work as a business journalist. I loved my job. I, I figured, I learned very quickly that I was made for this job. I enjoyed going and meeting the CEOs, and that was in Chennai at that point in time. I enjoyed meeting the CEOs. I enjoyed interviewing them. I enjoyed talking to them. I enjoyed coming back and writing stories about their businesses, about the industry, about the economy, and I realized that I was doing very well in my job. I was highly ambitious. And I was kind of getting promoted pretty much every year. Annual increments of about 30% was pretty much the norm. And by the age of 34, I had become the editor of a magazine called Outlook Business. At that point in time, I was one of the youngest editors of a business magazine. In many ways, it was through my career in business journalism that I began to learn to delight in Jesus every single day having discovered him earlier. And the sec that's the second part of the story that I'd like to share with you, how I'm learning to delight in Jesus every single day. For me, as, as Jaya said, believing in Jesus is not a one-time decision. Believing in Jesus is a lifestyle. And I want to talk about three reasons why I believe in Jesus. Talk about three reasons why I delight in Jesus. I delight in Jesus because Jesus is healing my identity. Jesus is healing my idolatry. And Jesus is healing my selfish indulgences. Three reasons. He's healing my identity, he's healing my idolatry, and he's healing my indulgences. And I want to walk us through all three of these. Let me talk about Jesus healing my identity. You know, as a business journalist, every time I write a story, my name would go along with the story. In journalistic parlance, this is called a byline. And uh, the, the byline is, is good and it's bad. It's good because every time you write a story, your name goes with the story. So the whole world knows that you wrote the story. About, you know, very re some recently I interviewed Bill Gates and when the interview is published, along with the interview, my name was there with the story. Some time ago I interviewed uh, Arun Jaitley as a finance minister and a few cabinet ministers and that was recorded and, and telecast live on television. So my name was attached to my work. Every day morning when people wake up, hundreds of people, thousands of people, even lakhs of people 
would read, would read the stories and my name would be with that story. That's, that's, a, that's a big kick. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, your work is appreciated. Your, work, your name is there against your work. But the byline also has problems. It, the problem is because your name is associated with your work, you're, it is, you're always under pressure. So it doesn't matter. It did not matter how good the story I wrote, wrote last month was. It did not matter how good the story I wrote last week was. I was only as good as my last story. That's the performance-driven culture we and I, you and I, we all live in. And you can relate to that. Uh, if I'm only as good as my last story, you're only as good as your last quarter sales. Or you're only as good as the last case you won if you're a lawyer. Or you're only as good as the last pitch you made if you're in advertising. You're only as good as the last client you won if you're in uh, marketing uh, or, or, in, or, or in sales. That's the performance-driven culture we, we, we all live in. And as, and as we live in this culture, and I began to realize that I had this compulsive need to prove myself over and over and over again. And as I had to prove myself daily, 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 before I realized it, my career became my identity. Who I am was lost in what I did. I became my work, my soul, my person, who I was inside was completely lost to my work. And this had huge highs and huge lows. Of course, I enjoyed the highs. It was thrilling to be successful at work. I was doing very well. But when things would go wrong in my work, I would feel crushed. I would be devastated. So while on the outside, I was being extremely successful, on the inside, I was an emotional wreck because my identity was so closely connected with my work that every time I did well and these ups and downs battered my, my soul. Forget what others thought of me. I accepted myself only for my work, not for who I was. I respected myself only for my work, not for who I was. It was this, through this journey, in this season of my life, that Jesus began to show me how grace is, so, is such a beautiful and refreshing contrast to the performance-driven culture of the world. And I began to cling to Jesus more and more. I began to love Jesus more and more. I began to believe in Jesus more and more. And as I started doing that, I began to understand the incredible depth and the beauty of the love of Jesus. I began to understand that God's love for me is not based on what I did do or what I did not do. I began to understand that God's love for me was based on what Christ Jesus did. His perfect sinless life, his sacrificial death, his life-giving resurrection. I began to understand that all of this, Jesus did all of this to purchase for me the love of God. And so Jesus is healing my identity. I, I do many things. I'm, I'm an author. I've just written my first book. That book is there in all of your, all of your packs. I'm a, a, a business journalist. I, I run a fairly, uh, some fairly significant editorial uh, uh, programs. I, I'm, uh, I'm a pastor. I'm a church planter. I'm a father. I'm a husband. But none of these are my primary identity. I'm learning and enjoying the fact that my primary identity is that I'm loved and accepted by God in Jesus. And Jesus is teaching me to, to live and operate in all of these other identities I have through my primary identity of being loved and accepted by God in Jesus. Jesus is healing my identity. The second thing I wanted to share on why I delight in Jesus is Jesus is healing my idolatry. 
You see, in my career in business journalism, I was always grasping for success. I was always grasping for the next job, for the better job. I was always grasping for a bigger team, for a bigger paper to work for, for a bigger salary, for a better designation, for a better cabin, a better and bigger cabin. I was always trying to grasp these things. And let me use a funny illustration to, 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 to uh, help you understand what I was going through. <clears throat> Imagine I'm standing here before a bucket of water. And I like that water. I want to grasp that water. I'm trying to grasp the uh, water in the bucket with my fist. And, but I clench my fingers. There's no water left. I can't grasp anything. So I think, well, this bucket is too small. I, I need a bigger pool of body to grasp the water from. So I fill a bathtub with water. And I go to the bathtub and say, surely there's a lot more water in the bathtub than in the bucket. Uh, I'm going to grasp it. I put my hand into the bathtub to grasp the water. Up comes my hand, still nothing. I think, hang on. The bathtub is too small. I need to walk across to that swimming pool down the corridor. I go to the corridor, say, surely this is, this is big. The swimming pool is big. Surely I can grasp water from here. And I try and grasp water from the swimming pool. Nothing in my hand. I say, I can fix this. I know what I've been doing wrong. I just need to go to the beach. And I go to the beach, and there's the ocean, and there's water as far as my eyes can see. And I think to myself, surely I'll be able to grasp this. I step into the water, try to grasp. Nothing comes out. That's what I was doing for many years in my career, trying to grasp the thing, things that I thought would bring deep joy and fulfillment to my soul. And I thought that the bigger things I go to in my career, the more I can grasp. And I found out the more I tried to grasp what my soul really craved for, the bigger the things I tried to grasp those, find those things, the more I was disappointed. I realized I could never grasp any of these things until I began to grow in my realization that I may not be able to grasp these things, but I began to grow in my realization that in Jesus, I can get hold of God himself. I can grasp God. I can embrace God. I can enjoy the fullness of God in Jesus. And so every day since then, it's been quite a few years now, I read the Bible in the morning. I feast on Jesus. Every day in the morning, I'm fulfilled in him. I'm satisfied in him. I'm comforted in him. I'm made whole and complete in him. I, I, I find my joy in him. Jesus is healing my idolatry. The third reason I delight in Jesus every single day is that Jesus is healing my selfish indulgences. You know, all my life, I have always wanted to serve people. I've always wanted to do that. But I've always ended up living a very self-indulgent life. I always had a strong desire to do something of meaning, significance, value, worth, to give something back to society, to help people, to do something that makes a small contribution to the nation. Though that desire was strong, but I was never able to live that desire out. It was as if I was both strong and weak at the same time, strong in my desire to do good, to help others, but very weak, very weak in my ability to live that desire out. I still remember about 22 years, 22, 23 years ago, uh, when I was living in Chennai, uh, I went to a gypsy camp. Uh, you know, there were a lot of these gypsies, these nomads, really poor people, and I saw a lot of their children, and my heart melted. I spent about three hours with them, helping them, talking to them, building a friendship with them, serving them. At the end of the three hours, uh, my heart was so moved that I made big plans of how I was going to come there at least twice a week for a few hours to help them, to serve them. Not only did I make big plans in my heart, but I also made big promises to all of them that I'm going to keep coming back every single week, twice or thrice a week. I'm going to spend two, three hours with you, and these are the things I'm going to do to serve you. I never went back the second time. I was strong in my desire to serve people, but very weak in my ability to actually live that desire out. And then 
as I began to cling to Jesus more and more, I began to see that Jesus came to serve and not to be served. I understood that Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. I began to understand that Jesus, God himself, died on the cross to save you and to save me from our sins. And when I see God every day, God himself, Christ Jesus, sacrificing himself for humanity, sacrificing himself for me, in that I find the power, I find the strength to overcome my self-indulgences. And slowly, little by little, I'm learning to serve. A couple of years ago, uh, when my career was really at its peak, I felt led by God and I took a call that I'm going to only work only two days a week. And I took a 50% cut in my salary, gave away a lot of my responsibilities, limited my work to just a few small segments for the economic times. And I've been finding great joy in sacrificially serving uh, professionals and artists through the church we are planting. My wife does a significant amount of work uh, with sex workers, and she's been finding joy. And together as a family, we've been finding joy and consistency in serving others. This is because... Jesus has been healing my indulgences. Jesus is healing my identity. Jesus is healing my idolatry. Jesus is healing my indulgences. I want to close with just one thought. I do many things. I wear many, 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 ha many hats. Uh, I'm an author. My first book is out. I'm thinking about a second book already. Uh, I'm a church planter and a pastor. Uh, I'm a business journalist a husband, a father. I do many things. Uh, I train pastors. I coach pastors. I, I do uh, workshops on writing. There are many things I do. But I rest in Jesus. I begin to understand that resting in Jesus does not mean not doing these things. Rest in Jesus is not a cessation of work. I'm beginning to understand because of the model Jesus set for me that when I do all of these, these things to serve others, that's actually resting. But when I do all of these things for myself, that becomes stress. That is fatigue. But in Jesus, in Jesus, I've been finding the joy of, of just resting in him by doing all of these things. Slowly, slowly. I still struggle. But slowly, I've been doing these things for the benefit of others at my expense, just as Jesus gave his life for the benefit of others at his expense. So that's the story of my discovery of Jesus and my delighting in Jesus. I know later in the evening there's going to be a time for questions. If you have questions, I'll try my best to answer those questions. Um, but you're going to have a lot of really amazing speakers who are going to be sharing different slices of their journeys. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a great encouragement for all of us. Enjoy the day. Thank you.